All right, all right, all right. Let's get the show on the motherfucking road. What's good on y'all? How we doing? Thank you guys so much for tuning in, stopping on by. Hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, so what is on the ye old docket for the day? Um, you know, just the usual reviews uh, for week, what is it, 11? Then the good old week 12 power rankings, week 12 preview as well. Um, we'll also take, since uh, we're getting closer to the playoffs, we'll also take a look at what the current projected playoff brackets are. Um, because in our league, the only the top six teams actually make the playoffs. So some of those projections are starting to be handed out. And then lastly, we will, uh, you know, do the usual and pick our, you know, holy shit. Why is it playing twice? Oh, I hear it. I would need to do that in order for everyone to hear it. Holy shit, it scared the fuck out of me. Whew, that scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> Good lord. Ah, yes, the multiverse. I have no idea why it played twice, though. So, ah, that's fine. But hey, nothing like getting double Rick rolled. Rick rolled. But anyways, thank you, Freddy. What's going on, brother? Much love, my guy. Thanks for stopping in. How we doing? Hope your Thanksgiving was swell. Also, I got super card running in the corner. I'm doing a king of the king of the ring. Just waiting for the next round. But anyways, um, so like I said, that's gonna be what is the on the docket for the night. Um, well, at least for this episode, uh, we might end and then reboot up with something else. Um, we'll see. But. Anyways, without too much further ado, let's get into the action. Alright. Into the Fancy House Live World. Alright, so as always, we are going to start with the good old uh, reviews, which is actually from week 11. I'm just getting some set up on the other screen here. Okie dokie. So... Do, 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 do. Week 11 broke down uh, something like this. In our, what well, should have been our game of the week, uh, it's uh, All Hail the Sun God and D. Adams Family. In which case, D. Adams Family was actually able to pick up the win, a huge win actually this week, by a score of 134 to 119. Then in our second matchup here, we have the Young Guns taking on Team Nugent, and Team Nugent just kind of just steamrolling that one. Uh, by a score of uh, 130 to 95. In our third matchup, it's a peanut oil uh, squeak out a 10, uh, pretty much a 10 point win. Well, actually, it's not, it's, it's more than a 10 point win, 12 point. Um, well, not even. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, yeah, it is a 12 point win. Anyways, uh, but uh, over Bob's Burgers, while if we go into our fourth matchup, it's I was like, I was like, holy shit, I'm questioning my own uh, quick math here. I was like, this is simple math, brother. Get it together. Get it together. But, anyways, uh, in our fourth matchup, we have Desert Swarm picking up a huge win against CD's Nuts in a high-scoring affair. In which case, Desert Swarm got uh, picked up the win with, by, with a score of 147 to 130. So that's just insanely high. Then in our fourth match or fifth matchup, we have Kelsey Me Softly, the reigning. And defending champion currently, uh, winning this week against Team Dicka by a score of 143 to 82. And then finally, in our last game, we had two of the lowest teams in the league, uh, better on paper and pool of dumpster water facing off, and better on paper finally getting a win, uh, uh, by a score of 123 to 92. But, all right, here we go. Let's dig into how all this stuff broke down. Into the break it down. Move that. Scooch this over. That should do. Okay. 
Oh wait, because even it shows what position they are right there. Word, this works. Okay. So starting at the top with all hail the sun god. <laughs> She's been taking losses lately. And hey, at, and at the wrong point in the season too, bro. You can't be taking losses now. This is right when the playoffs are starting. I was like, can you squeak into the playoffs? I mean, we'll actually take a look in at the end. Actually, we can probably tell by the standings, but anyways. Um, starting with our first matchups review, which was All Hail the Sun God and the Adams Family, which saw the Adams Family picking up the win. So starting off with our QBs, we had CJ Stroud picking up, even though he did pick up the win and his continuing his insane season for CJ Stroud, only able to get uh, 18 points this week in the win over Arizona. While for the Adams Family, they had Tua able to get 20 points this week. So just squeaking out CJ there in a uh, win over Vegas. Then if we look at the running backs, we had Austin Eckler for All Hail the Sun God, uh, only able to get seven points. So just a massive, just underperformance uh, when they played Green Bay. <clears throat> While for DM's family, Saquon Barkley finally coming alive, scoring 30 points uh, in that huge win over Washington. Then we'll just stick with uh, DM's family here and Javante Williams, who scored seven points in the win over Minnesota. While Najee Harris for All Hail the Sun God only uh, only only got four points this week in that loss to Cleveland. Uh, and what's even worse is that Mr. Jalen Warren, 23 points, just chilling on my bench. So that could have helped. Boof, oof. They've both been plug and play, and I chose the wrong one that week. Um, anyways, if we want to stay with All Hail the Sun God here, we have Amon Ross St. Brown, the you know aforementioned team name here. We have scoring 21 points this week in a win over uh, Chicago. Well, I say this week, even though this is technically last week, but you get what I mean. Um, Stefan Diggs uh, for the Adams Family, able to get six points this week in a win over the Jets. Then if we stay with the Adams Family and Devontae Smith, who scored 15 points this week in a win over KC. While Keenan Allen continuing his insanely stellar season this, uh, this year, able to get 27 points in a loss to Green Bay. Then if we move into the tight ends, uh, first of two tight ends here, we have TJ Hawkinson, only able to get at nine points this week, who had been on an insane run as of late, uh, as they lost to Denver. Then George Kittle for DeAndre's family had himself a game, at, you know, just kind of the way the Niners have been. Uh, one of those many superstars on that team tends to go off in this game. It happened to be George Kittle going for 22 points this week in a win over Tampa. Now, if we go into the flex spot, we got DM family here again with Nico Collins, who was able to get 13 points as part of that Houston offense that's got that win over Arizona. Well, Dalton Kincaid for uh, All Heal the Sun God here, only able to get 10. Well, I say all, only, but uh, continuing a pretty damn good uh, string of performances here, able to get 10 points this week in a blowout win over the Jets. If we move into the defenses, we have the Dolphins for All Heal the Sun God here, able to get 13 points in that uh, win over Vegas, while the Steelers able to get a pretty modest 8 points this week, even though losing to Cleveland. Now, if we stay with the Adams family, we have uh, and roll into the kickers. We have Evan McPherson for the Adams family, able to get 9 points, while Dustin Hopkins for All Hail the Sun God, able to get 7 points in that win over Pitt. Uh, Evan McPherson able to get those 9 points in that loss to Baltimore. All right, moving on into our first ass whooping here, which was Team Nuge whooping the Young Guns. All right, starting at the top. As per usual, we have Justin Herbert for Team Nuge here, able to get 28 points in the loss to Green Bay, while Patrick Mahomes only able to get 18 points this week in a loss to Philly. Uh, they just that so many drops that game just unfortunate for Mahomes but you know almost pretty pretty even performance here but you know even uh Herbert in that loss did kind of edge, edge him out there wait I was looking at the projected not the not the uh not what it actually ended up, up with Herbert co completely outplayed uh Mahomes but that's also because Mahomes had a lot of drops uh Herbert with 28 points um anyways Moving into the running backs, uh, James Cook for Young Guns here, able to get 19 points this week in a win over the Jets, while Jameer Gibbs uh, able to get 21 points in a uh, big, no one, what no one saw coming was a shootout with the Bears, but they did come back and win that game. Uh, Jameer Gibbs with 21 points on that day. If we just stay with Team Nuge here and Raheem Mostert, who had 10 points on 
the win with Vegas. Well, Royce Freeman for Young Guns here. Only able to get seven points. As I think he's the number two back there in uh, in LA right now. So uh, oh, that's pretty much what the uh, sort of output you would expect from that position. Um, even though, I mean, <clears throat> not even though. But that was seven points in the win over Seattle. Then if we go into the wide receivers, we got Jamar Chase. Uh, for Team Nugent here, able to get 9 points. Oh wait, did I skip Raheem Mostert, who got 10 points in the win over Vegas for Team Nugent? I couldn't remember. But if I didn't say it, now I did. Uh, anywho, we have Jamar Chase, able to get 9 points in that loss to Baltimore, while uh, Young Guns able to get 20 points out of DK this week, even though they did lose to the Rams. Then if we stay with the Young Guns and go into the wide receiver twos, we have Scary Terry McLaurin, Able to get nine points this week in a loss to the Giants. Uh, while for Team Nuge and Mike Evans, who's been kind of on a bit of a roll this week, not this week, as of late, able to get 15 points in a losing effort to the Niners. Now, if we go into the tight ends and we'll just stay with Team Nuge, once again, we have Evan Mc... Not Evan McPherson, what the hell? Evan Engram, able to get six points this week in a win over Tennessee, while Mark Andrews, I believe this is the game he actually got injured in after like only a couple plays. He was only able to get four points before being injured and being done for the season, which just sucks <clears throat> for the young guns there. Huge loss. Then if we go into the flex spot, we got Christian Kirk able to get... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Able to get seven points this week in a win over uh, Tennessee. While I was like, can I not read anymore? While Jalen Waddle uh, for Team Nuge here, able to get only nine points. I say only nine points, but nine points is actually pretty respectable. Uh, nine points this week in a win over Vegas. Now, if we move into the defenses, we have the Bills for Team Nuge going off for 21 points in a huge blow over the Jets. While the Seahawks uh, going for six points in a loss to the Rams for the Young Guns. Then if we go into the kickers, we'll just stay with Jake Elliott real quick, who had three points in a win over Casey. Well, Cameron Dicker, the kicker for the Chargers, only able to get, I only say able to get, but it doesn't make any sense. Eight points is actually pretty damn good, considering Jake Elliott only got three. But anyways, uh, eight points in that loss to Green Bay. Little sip. <laughs> All right. Next, we look at the uh, pretty narrow victory of peanut oil over Bob's Burgers. Starting off once again with the kickers. All right. We have starting off with peanut oil. We have Josh Allen, able to get 25 points this week in a blowout win over the Jets. Uh, if we shift back to Bob's Burgers, who had Joe Burrow, who I think he this is a game that he also got injured before being done for the season, so that's a huge loss for Bob's Burgers there. Did I skip the kickers? I said Cameron Dicker went for eight and Jake Elliott went for three. Or did I say kickers and I meant for Q and I was talking about QBs I was starting with the ki Jesus I was talking kickers and I had still had them on my brain god damn you fucking Pat McAfee for the brand got your special teams in my mind all right I'm um, starting with our quarterbacks there we go that makes more sense right uh Josh Allen thank you <laughs> thanks Jenna. anyways how you doing hope you had a happy Thanksgiving great to see you appreciate you um, Josh Allen, 25 points in that win. Joe Burrow, only 9 points in that. Yeah, I think this was the game that he uh, got injured. Uh, only 9 points in that loss to Baltimore. If we skip into the running backs, we, we'll stay with Bob's Burgers for this one. Derrick Henry, only able to get 5 points this week in a loss to Jacksonville. While Josh Jacobs, able to get 6 points in a uh, six points this week in a loss to uh, Miami for peanut oil. Then, if we go into the RB2s, we have Brian Robinson Jr. able to get 20 points this week in a loss to the Giants, while Tyler Algier did not get subbed out for Bob's Burgers. Um, so that's, you know, you hate to see that, that's unfortunate. Anyways, if we stay with Bob's Burgers and go into the wide receiver once, we have DJ Moore who will put up big numbers this week in a 22-point effort, despite losing to Detroit, uh, even though they should, 
quite frankly, they probably should have won that game, but Bears gonna Bears. Anyways, uh, Cooper Cup able to get two points this week. I think Cooper Cup also got injured this uh, that game, or this week, uh, even though they did win in a uh, win over uh, Seattle. Then we go to the wide receiver twos. We'll stay with Peanut Oil once again. We had Marquise Brown, only able to get three points this week in a losing effort to Houston. While for Bob's Burgers, DeAndre Hopkins also had himself a pretty decent week, getting 15 points this week in a win over Jack, or a win, that is a loss to Jacksonville. Then staying with Bob's Burgers once again, but moving into the tight ends, we have David Njoku, uh, able to get to 12 points this week in a win over Pitt. While if we skip on over to Peanut Oil, we had Donald Parham Jr., able to get 9 points uh, in a win over Tampa. Flipping to the flex spots, we but staying with Peanut Oil, we have Debo Samuel, only able to getting only able to get nine points this week in a win over Tampa. While Garrett Wilson, not even getting one point this week, uh, in a loss to Buffalo. Then moving into the tight end, not tight ends, the defenses. Good lord. Uh, starting with the Lions, only able to get six points this week uh, as they took on Chicago and was behind for most of it. Then. Uh, Browns able to get eight points in a win over Pittsburgh for Peanut Oil. Uh, Lions got six for Bob's Burgers, by the way. Then finally, in the kicker category, we have uh, Matt Amendola only able to get two points in the win over Arizona. Well, Matt Gay on bye week, so no points for him once again. Unfortunate, Bob's Burgers just did not set the lineup this week. Hate to see it. Moving into our next matchup, which was. Desert Swarm taking on CD's Nuts. Lol. Every time. Gets me. So make sure that's nice and over. Alright. <clears throat> Starting with the quarterbacks this time. See? I said it right. I said it right. I said it right. Uh, Brock Purdy for Desert Swarm. Having himself a day. 30 points for the man. Uh, once called Mr. Irrelevant, but I don't think you can say that anymore. Uh, 30 points in that win over Tampa versus Mr. Jalen Hurts for CD here. Uh, able to get 20 points in that win over KC. Huge win for Philly in KC there. Then if we move into the next set, uh, next position more or rather, it is the running backs. We have Aaron Jones only able to get two points in the loss to the Chargers. Unfortunately, he did get injured for that game. I think it was like an MCL sprain. So that's just oof. At least he's not done for the season. But he's had such an up and down season. So unfortunate as a Packer fan. I know it's weird that I'm saying that as a person in a Niners jersey right now. But we don't got to talk about it. Um, anyways, we have the Desert Swarm, who's RB1 in Tony Pollard, able to get 18 points this week in a win over Carolina. Uh, while staying with the Desert Swarm but into the RB2 spot, we have Travis Etienne. Able to get 8 points this week in a win over Tennessee. Well, Rashad White for CD here. Able to get 17 points in a loss to San Fran. Then, if we move right on into the wide receivers, we have Tyreek Hill. Able to get 30 points. Uh, this this man is just absolutely insane. Like, it doesn't matter who he's playing. He just always, like, pretty much has a consistent average of, like, 20 points. Uh, anyways, getting 30 points this week in a win over Las Vegas. Uh, well, for CD, who had Devontae also threw up big numbers this week in a 21, or getting 21 points this week in a loss to uh, Miami. Staying with CD's nuts here, Aaron Bumass Jones. Hey, he's been, yeah, it's true. He, it's been a shitty week for, or a shitty year for him. It's been a shitty year for Packers in general. Although he was supposed to be more of a focal point, but apparently they're just like, you know what, fuck it, he's, we're just going to have Jordan Huckett down the field. Why not? Um, anyways, if we move into the next set of wide receivers here, we'll stay with CD's nuts here, who, his namesake is CD Lamb, had 16 points this week in a win over Carolina, while for the Desert Swarm, Cortland Sutton, able to have 16 points, who's just catching fire at the right time with them Broncos in a win over Minnesota. Then if we stay with the Desert Swarm but go into the tight ends, it is Trey McBride, able to get 9 points this week in a loss to Houston while Dalton Schultz. Uh, going off for about 11 points this week in a win over Arizona for CD. Then if we go into the uh, flex spot, CD rolling with the double tight ends. I respect the strat as that's what I've been doing. Uh, uh, getting six points this week in a win over Carolina. While David Montgomery getting 17 points this, uh, this week for the Desert Swarm in a win over Chicago. Then if we move into the defenses, we have the Ravens for Desert Swarm. 
only able to get, I say only, but seven points is decent. Uh, seven points in that win over Cincy while the Cowboys just are absolutely smashing everyone. Able to get 23 points this week in a win over Carolina. If we move into the kicker position, Justin Tucker able to get 11 points in a win over Cincinnati, while Brandon Aubrey, the rookie kicker for Dallas, only able to get 9 points this week in a win over Carolina. He's actually been super consistent for a kicker this week, or this year, for rookie kicker at that. All right, moving into another ass whooping, which saw our reigning and defending community league champion and Kelsey Me Softly. We should rename... We should call his team Karma. I'm not going to go into it. Sorry, I even went there. Anyways, uh, so Team Dicka versus Kelsey Me Softly. Uh, anyways, we're just going to start off with the QBs. Let me roll this down. Damn it. Hashtag not a Swifty. Okay. Um. So we have the quarterbacks once again, starting with Team Dicka and Justin Fields, who actually had a pretty decent day in getting 22 points, in, even though losing to Detroit, and despite all odds. Then if we look at Kelsey Softly, Trevor Lawrence getting 30, 34 points this week, so completely just killing it, but then again going against Tennessee, just unfortunate. Uh, even though they get, they got a, going against Tennessee in a blowout uh, over them, so that's why he's you know able to throw up those, like, those points. Now, <clears throat> also, the Jacksonville Jags are actually fucking good. Also got to state that, too, because they are not the same Jags under Urban that were just complete bum-ass dudes, dude. Like, these guys know how to play. Just Trevor Lawrence is back to his winning ways for the most part, um, and they're right on the way to rebuilding that team. Um, anyways, if we move into the running back twos, we have Kelsey Softly, who had Kenneth Walker only able to get two points this week in a loss to the Rams. I think he went out for a little bit of time with an injury, which is, I hate to see it, but just a game, uh, that's what happens when you play a contact sport like football. Moving in over to Team Dicka, who's Jerome, who had Jerome Ford actually get 11 points this week in a win over Pittsburgh. Um, then if we have Mr. Brees Hall... Um, do, 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 who had 18 points this week in a loss to Buffalo, uh, while Khalil Herbert for Kelsey Misofli, who had Khalil Herbert only able to get six points this week in a loss to Detroit. Now, staying with Kelsey Misofli, but going into the wide receiver ones, we have Brandon Ayuk getting 26 points this week in a win over Tampa, while AJ Brown able to get one point this week in a uh, only able to get one point this week, even though winning over getting a win over Kansas City. I think uh, Devontae Smith was kind of like a main part of that. So was their rushing, rushing, uh, like their rushing, like attack. I should say. I don't, I don't know what rushing strategy, like strategy maybe. But either way, did a lot of rushing that game, and it really opened things up. Also, Devontae Smith had himself a decent game. Uh, but and either way. Unfortunate to see that AJ Brown kind of had a down week as he's been having an insane, insane year. Only able to get less than two points this week. Then if we move into the wide, uh, next set of wide receivers, staying with Team Dicka, who had uh, Jordan Addison, only able to get seven points this week in a loss to Denver. Well, for Kelsey Musoffi, Tank Dell exploded for 28 points this week uh, in a win over Arizona. Now, if we go into the tight ends, but staying with Kelsey Misofli, we have the aforementioned Mr. Kelsey, uh, able to get 15 points this week in a loss to Philly. While for uh, Team Dicka here, Sam Laporta only able to get seven, uh, six points in a win over Chicago. If we move into the flex, but we'll stick with, we'll stay with Team Dicka on this one. Uh, Deontay Johnson able to get three points in a loss to Cleveland. While for Kelsey Misofli, Adam Thielen able to get 15 points in a loss to Dallas. Then if we go into the defenses, we have the Jets able to get one point this week in a loss to Buffalo. While the Commanders able to get a pretty damn good 11 points uh, as they beat up on the Giants. Then, or as they took a beating from the Giants. Uh, it's surprising considering it was the scoreline was 19-31 to 31, that they managed to get 11 But hey, it is what it is I guess, right? It's kind of weird how that works. Um, anyways, if we look at Jake, or if we go into the kickers here, uh, we'll stay with Kelsey, 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 
Kelsey Me Softly and Riley Patterson only able to get three points this week in a win over Chicago. Old Jake Moody for Team Dicka able to get nine points in a win over Tampa. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I want to we gotta go to the next match, which was oh sweet, this is our last matchup. So it is actually better on paper and pool of dumpster water, which at current time was both of our um <laughs> last place teams so it was like a dumpster the dump the, the toilet bowl preview you know all right quick little sip better on paper finally starting to turn things around as they got this win over pool of dumpster water Starting with the QBs and better on paper, Lamar Jackson going off for 26 points this week in a win over Cincy. Pool of Dumpster Water had Kyler Murray. He had 23 points this week in a loss to Houston. Staying with uh, Pool of Dumpster Water but moving into the running back position who had Christian McCaffrey uh, going for 21 points this week in a win over Tampa. While Joe Mixon for better on paper also going off this week for 21 points uh, in a losing effort to Baltimore. Uh, staying with better on paper and the Gus bus, which continues also scoring 21 points this week in a win over Cincy. Well, if you look over at pool of dumpster water and uh, Daryl Henderson Jr. Who is a free agent. So he did not score any points, which I guess that's shit. Just apparently just didn't set his team. Hate to see it. Um, and then if we look at the first set of wide receivers, but we'll stay with pool of dumpster water first. In which Tyler Lockett able to get 10 points this week in a loss to the Rams, while better on paper had Gabe Davis, who got a put up a goose egg in a win over the Jets. But staying with better on paper once again with uh, their second wide receiver, who was Michael Gallup, only able to get six points this week in a win over Carolina, while Curtis Samuel able to get one point this week in a loss to the Giants. Then if we go at the tight ends, we have Tyler Conklin staying with Pool Dumpster Water, of course. Able to get three points this week in a loss to Buffalo, while Cole Komet able to get only five, I say only five points, but five points is pretty decent, considering the last few weeks, in a losing effort to Detroit. Then in the flex spot, uh, for better on paper here, it saw OBJ able to get 15 points in that win over Cincy, while for Pool of Dumpster Water, once again, Alexander Madison only able to get seven points in that loss to Denver. Then if we go into the defenses, but stay once again with Pool of Dumpster Water, it is good old the vikings putting up four points this week and i lost to denver while the niners for better on paper put up 11 points in the win over Tampa. then once again and finally tyler bass uh this one for better on paper here getting 17 points in a win over uh the jets while joey sly able to get eight points this week in a loss to the giants all right now we switch gears a little bit to our power rankings. Oh, I forgot to pull up one thing. I need that. And then I need that. Just so I have some comparison. Perfect. Okay. So here is the week 11 power rankings. So there wasn't a ton of movement this week in the league. Uh, Desert Swarm still remains uh, number one as our number one overall top dog. Um, wait, 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 wait. Did I already fuck this up? Oh my god. Lol. Ah, Sag. Desert Swarm supposed to be eight and or supposed to be nine and two. Motherfuck. Uh. Well, I guess I should have proofread this a little fucking harder. Well, rip. Okay. Well, Desert Swarm is actually nine and two. So just imagine there's a nine there. Nine and two. Anyways, um, Desert Swarm is in currently in first place once again with a <laughs> record of nine and uh nine and two. They also clinched a playoff berth this uh, this month or uh, this week. 
Then in the two spot remains once again D. Adams family, who also has a record or who has a record of eight and three. We did this whole thing just not get updated? What, what the fuck, brother? So did I miss the first two? Sag, good lord, who's running this show? Who's running this shit? Com file the complaint. Okay, so Desert Swarm was nine and two. The Adams family eight and three. Good lord. So apparently I, I got overzealous and just jumped straight to the new guy. But anyways, Team Nugent making his way back into the top dogs this week uh, with a record of eight and three. While if we move into the middle of the pack, all hail the sun god dropping out of the top dogs from number three down to number four. Uh, Maybe I'll tweet my displeasure. <laughs> oh god. Imagine. Um, anyways, All Hail the Sun God also sitting with a record of 8-3. and three. Then there was pretty much no movement between our top dogs. So CD's, nut, CD's Nuts coming in at number 5 uh, with a record of 6-5. and five. Team Dicka coming in at uh, 6. Um, yeah, team Dicka coming in at six, uh, with a six and five record. At seven was Peanut Oil with a six and five record. Uh, then at eight is the once again the reigning and defending champion of the league, Kelsey Me Softly, who has a uh, four and seven record. Then out of nowhere, which is funny, these two people played each other in a what is supposed to be kind of like the toilet bowl preview. So one of them actually took an L this week, and they both both moved out of the dumpster fires. So both Better on Paper and Pool of Dumpster Water actually got out of the dumpster fires. Uh, both have a record of 3 and 8, but uh, Better on Paper moving up to 9th this week, and Pool of Dumpster Water moving up to 10th this week. Then, that means our new entries into the dumpster fires is Bob's Burgers, who has a record of 3 and 8, while the Young Guns have the worst record in the league and are... Yep, just uh, unfortunately not having a very good season. Sitting at 12 with a record of 2 and 9 on the season. See, always, always super quick. At least for the power rankings. All right. Now, lastly, we are going to do the previews. Um, do, 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 do. Let me change this. So th these games are technically in progress, and you'll see these when we and we'll, when we go over the games in kind of like more detail. But I'm adjusting my other screen if you're wondering. That should be something like that. Okay. So in our first game, uh, we have All Hail the Sun God taking on CD's Nuts. Uh, All Hail the Sun God coming into the matchup at 8-3 with CD's Nuts coming in at 6-5. Then in our second matchup, it sees Peanut Oil taking on the Young Guns. Uh, Young Guns coming into the matchup at 2-9 while Peanut Oil coming in at 6-5. Then if we go into our third matchup, it is the Desert Swarm, the number one overall top dog, taking on Bob's Burgers, uh, one of the lower tier dumpster fires. Uh, yeah, uh, Desert Swarm coming in at 9 and 2, while Bob's Burgers comes in the matchup with at 3 and 8. Then in our game of the week, it is Team Dicka sitting at 6 and 5, taking on our number 2 overall top dog in the Adams family uh, at 8 and 3. Then in our fourth matchup of the week, it is Better on Paper taking on Kelsey Me Softly, who is the reigning and defending champion. You know I'm going to say it every time. Uh, Better on Paper coming into the matchup at 3 and 8, while Kelsey Me Softly kind of almost similar situation but four and seven then finally in our last matchup of the week we have team nugent our third row top dog taking on someone who has just gotten out of the dumpster fires in a pool of dumpster water uh team nugent coming into the matchup at t eight and three while pool of dumpster water sits at three and eight on the season all right now if we take a look at kind of how these are some of these are going to be in progress, so it'll be we'll take our picks at who we think is going to do better, unless there's already one in progress. So let's let's do it. Back to the break it down. Let me drop this down. Okay, 
So starting off with our first matchup, which is CD's Nuts taking on All Hail the Sun God. So starting off for the QBs first, we have CJ Stroud taking on Jacksonville versus Jalen Hurts and Philly taking on Buffalo. Hmm. Uh, CJ Stroud's been lighting it up. Jacksonville pretty good. Jalen Hurts also been having a damn good season. They just beat Kansas City. That's huge. They're going against Buffalo. Uh, it looks like they are playing in Philly. Buffalo does not seem to be... They're not remotely as good, but I think that's mostly on Josh Allen giving them a lot of that away. They also are severely hurt. So this could be a pretty close matchup, but I'm going to have to... I probably have to give the edge to Jalen Hurts on this one just because of how hurt and how bad Buffalo is. Jacksonville is pretty formidable. I, I think JCJ is going to continue to have a good season, continue to have a good season and have a good game, but um, I just think Jalen is probably going to make a little bit more advantage here. Um, okay, in our next matchup, starting with, well, I guess my first set of RBs, uh, Aaron Jones was out, so that put up a goose egg, so we have Austin Eckler taken on Baltimore, so can't really rule in on that one as uh, there's already a score there. So if we move into the RB2s, we have Isaiah Pacheco and KC taking on Las Vegas and Rashad White uh, from Tampa taking on Indy. Um, hmm. Rashad taking on Indy. Indy's a pretty decent defense, actually. Rashad has been pretty mediocre, not like super great. Uh, Pacheco is actually one of the better running backs in the league. Obviously, he's part of that KC offense. He's also, uh, last week, he did actually do pretty damn good, and that was going against the Eagles this week. He draws a much easier, I shouldn't say, well, it's a little bit easier of a defense this week in the Raiders, but don't hold me. Uh, but I got to say that the Raiders are actually better uh, than a lot of people think. Having said that, I still think Pacheco is going to have the better day. So if we move into the wide receiver ones, which is technically, I can't really weigh in too much. Amon Ra already, already played and got 18 points. So we're looking to see what Devontae responds with as the Raiders play KC. Uh, in our our in our wide receiver two matchup, was already kind of got a score there, which CD Lamb had himself a pretty decent day, get, able to get 17 points, so keeping pace a little bit with Amon Ra. Uh, Keenan Allen uh, and the Chargers play Baltimore, so we'll see how that plays out. In our tight end matchup, we have TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota taking on Chicago, versus Dalton Schultz in Houston taking on Jacksonville. Mm, Dalton Schultz is pretty damn good, uh, as he in his seasons with. Uh, Dallas kind of showed he's having pretty damn good numbers uh, in a season with CJ Stroud. Um, I will say the matchup, though, is too damn favorable with uh, TJ Hawkinson and Chicago, even um, as long as Dobbs plays. Like, I think a lot of people were expecting pretty much that entire team to just tank once Dobbs took over as QB, but Dobbs as QB has actually been pretty beneficial to Hawkinson. Um, and the matchup with uh, Chicago is just too too good. If we move into the flex spot, we have Zay Flowers of Baltimore taking on the Chargers versus Michael Pittman Jr. And Indy taking on Tampa. Uh, Indy still has Minshew at QB, I believe. Um, Tampa's a mediocre defense, so I still expect Pittman to have some a pretty decent game. Um, Zay Flowers, the number one, he is the number one wide receiver there in Baltimore. If OBJ is injured and can't play. That's going to be, that's definitely going to open up more opportunities for Flowers, especially with Andrews injured. Also expect the Gus Bus to have a huge game. Uh, Chargers, not very good team. Uh, defense, also not very good, especially just got weaker considering they just lost Boza. So I'd start your Ravens. Um, so Zay Flowers, I like in this one. Um, in their battle of the defenses, can't really weigh in as the Dolphins had a phenomenal game, putting up 23 points. Cowboys only 14 points. Um, in their kickers, we have Dustin Hopkins in Cleveland taking on Denver versus Justin Tucker in Baltimore taking on the Chargers. Um, I think... Okay, I think Hopkins might have the better day here, but I think that's only because Watson's not going to be playing, and that's going to be because Dor I think it's Dorian Thompson, I think. Uh the Cleveland QB, the one of the backup Cleveland QBs is going to be playing, and there's going to be a lot of potential for drivers to stall out there, and Hopkins actually, is actually pretty good, so potential for more points to be scored there. Tucker, obviously, he's one of the best kickers in the league, going to be scoring pretty consistently, but because of how good that Ravens team is, I think they're going to be scoring uh, 
if not scoring a lot, they're going to get pretty damn close to uh, the goal line, which might not equate to as many points for a kicker. But uh, still, I think Dustin Hopkins has the chance for uh, some of those long range shots from like maybe 30, 40, even 50 yards out. But having said that, they are playing. Oh, and they are playing a mile high, too. So if that could help. Um, OK. Moving into our next matchup, which was peanut oil taking on young guns. There we go. Okay. Um, now if we go and take a look at the QBs, uh, Josh Allen for uh, Peanut Oil here, and and Buffalo taking on Philly versus Patrick Mahomes and KC taking on uh, the Raiders. Ooh, got to go Mahomes on this one. That matchup just purely on matchup alone too. Allen's given far too many game, far too many games away. Uh, Mahomes probably going to be looking for a bounce back revenge game after taking an L against the Eagles. Even though they are playing in Vegas, I think Mahomes is going to have a, a good bounce back game. In the RB1 spot, we have Elvin Kamara in New Orleans taking on Atlanta versus James Cook and Buffalo taking on Philly. Elvin Kamara, and this is purely based on the matchup once again because Philly is a fierce defensive front. Um, I know they just let Pacheco have a decent kind of game against them, but they're still still, still very uh, good against the run. And James Cook isn't Pacheco, and they're on a Buffalo team which could have Joss Allen give them, give them some chances, but Philly does have a kind of banged up, banged up secondary, so we'll see. Um, can't really weigh in on the running backs as both have played or the wide receiver ones as both of those have played um, with Brian Robinson getting 8 points, Jeff Wilson getting 10 Debo getting 22 and DK getting 6, a lot of this we'll just cover next week in our recap episode um, so can't really weigh in on wide receiver 2 he's had a scary Terry's already played so Cooper Cup is going to be taking on Arizona it's a pretty decent matchup assuming he's healthy so we can weigh in on the tight ends with Donald Parham Jr. and the Chargers playing Baltimore, while Kyle Pitts and Atlanta takes on New Orleans. This matchup is not favorable for either, but I'm gonna go to I'm gonna say Kyle Pitts on this one. Um, even though it is the Falcons, I, he's been kind of uh, used more. Uh, World Parham has been kind of up and down, used yeah sometimes, but uh, I just think Kyle Pitts might have just slightly better day. Moving to the uh, flexes, we have Las Vegas. Or well, we have Josh Jacobs and the Raiders taking on KC versus the Christian Kirk and Jacksonville taking on Houston. Um, maybe because Aiden O'Connell is going to be throwing well. Get on up! It's Bob Slate time! Yo, 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 yo. What's good, Zack Attack? Thank you so much, dude, for the raid. How we doing? How we feeling? What's good, brother man? Great to see you, dude. Great to see you. How we doing? How we feeling? Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, bringing your people over, dude. Welcome on in. You already know what we're doing. The good old Fantasy House Live, where we go over all the action from our community fantasy football league. How's your stream, brother man? Ooh, doing good. Playing some Alan Wake too. How you liking it, dude? I've been hearing a lot of people say it's really good. I haven't picked it up myself yet because, the, you know, life. But one day, maybe. We'll see. It's sick. Hell yeah, dude. I'll have to add that to my wish list. But, all right. We are going to continue on. But, hey, once again, dude, thank you so much for uh, sharing your people with me. You're a legend. Appreciate you, dude. Let's get you a good old shout out, shout out. Zack Attack, boom. All right. Where were we? Where were we? The flex spot. Um, I like to take Christian Kirk in this one. 
Um, Houston's defense is mediocre. Jacksonville's offense also pretty. It's pretty good. Um, Josh Jacobs, they are. He is a focal point of that offense. Uh, but they also have Tay, and they showed that uh, they're not a- afraid to let Aiden O'Connell let the ball fly. But I think Christian Kirk's going to have the better day there. If you look in the defenses here, we have the Browns taking on Denver, who are one of the best defenses in the league, and the Saints taking on Atlanta. Atlanta. If Denver wasn't actually doing so good, right? Like, they've been on a roll lately, so I would say uh, the Browns. But I like the Saints against uh, Atlanta. Um, even though it's pretty pretty even there, um, I think uh, the Saints defense is going to get a, a little bit more, deep, more points. Um, if we move into the kickers, we have Matt Amendola and Jake Elliott. Um... I think Matt Amendola might have the potential here to get more uh, points. Uh, Philly, very good team going against uh, Buffalo, which is both injured and kind of mid right now, as they've been kind of taking a lot of L's. Uh, so I would like Matt Amendola to have a little bit more opportunities going at, with two teams that are kind of a little bit more on each other's par. Uh, Matt Amendola, I would expect the ceiling for him to be a little bit higher. All right, moving into our third matchup. We have the Desert Swarm taking on Bob's Burgers. So some of these matchups, once again, have been in progress. Uh, So QB1s have already been started. Uh, RB1s have also been started. But Derrick Henry does take on Tennessee at Carolina. Um, So the first one we can weigh in on is actually RB2s with Travis Etienne Jr. and Jacksonville taking on Houston. DeAndre Swift and Philly taking on Buffalo. I'd go with Swift on this one, actually. He's a damn good running back. He's been having a phenomenal season. Great team going against, like I just said, banged up defense. That's also been taking a lot, stacking up a lot of L's. So I expect Swift to have a pretty good game. Same thing with Etienne. He's going to have a good game against Houston, but I expect Swift to have uh, more numbers. Our wide receiver ones have actually been started, so we can't win too much. Uh, DJ Moore goes against uh, Minnesota, which is pretty mid-defense. It just depends on what version of the Bears want to show up. The actually Bears that want to win a game or, you know, the bad news Bears, which give up a game and lose. Anyways, moving into the wide receiver ones, which we, or wide receiver twos, we can actually weigh in on. Uh, we have DeAndre Hopkins and Tennessee um, taking on Carolina versus Cortland Sutton and Denver taking on Cleveland. Hmm. Um... Let's see. Um, probably. Man, going against that Cleveland defense isn't going to be fun. But ah, you know what? Give me Will Levis against Carolina. Even though I do expect Cortland uh, Sutton to have some pretty decent numbers. In the tight end spot, we got Trey McBride in Arizona taking on the Rams for David Njoku in Cleveland taking on Denver. Um, give me Njoku. Uh, Denver is pretty de- decent on defense, but I think Njoku is going to have just a slightly better day. Um, flex spot we can't really weigh in on as both positions there have played. Same thing with the defense. Uh, who already had the Lions play uh, Broncos play Cleveland that should be interesting and then in our kickers also can't win much as Brandon Aubrey has already played so Matt Gay takes on Tampa for Bob's Burgers alright moving into our fourth matchup it is our game of the week which is uh, Team Dicka taking on D. Adams Family so our, we can't really weigh in on the QBs as Tua has already played. Justin Fields plays the Vikings on Monday. Can weigh in are in the running back ones, though, as JT and the Colts take on Tampa versus Saquon, and the Giants take on New England. Ooh. Give me Saquon in this one. He had an awesome game last week. I expect him to continue to build that progress. New England, terrible. Um, so I expect Saquon to go off. JT is obviously a beast. Uh, Tampa is a little bit more formidable against the run. 
but there's still Tampa's still mid, but I expect JT to have a pretty uh, all right day. Can't really weigh in on the RB2s here as Brees Hall has played. I actually played today tonight, um, and my Harmanji Stevenson plays on Sunday against the Giants, so ooh, that should be uh, perhaps a good, good game for him. Then if we go into the first set of wide receivers, we have AJ Brown and Philly taking on Buffalo versus Stephon Diggs and Buffalo taking on Philly. So these two guys will be taking on each other. But I'm, if I had to guess, I'd expect AJ Brown to have a better day with uh, how banged up the Bills are. Um, in the wide receiver twos, we have Jordan Addison in Minnesota taking on Chicago versus Devontae Smith and Philly taking on Buffalo. Once again, I'm going to pick on Buffalo here a little bit, Devontae Smith, and I also just trust Jalen Hurts way more than I do uh, Josh Allen. Wow, it took me a little bit to figure that out. So Devontae Smith, I expect to have a pretty damn good game, at least better than Addison. Although they are going against Chicago, and so that's going to boost his ceiling there too. Uh, we cannot weigh on tight ends as both Sam Laporta and George Kittle have played. We can weigh in on the flex spot, which saw Jerome Ford in Cleveland taking on Denver and Nico Collins take, in Houston taking on Jacksonville. Um, hmm. Give me Nico Collins. I like the matchup even though because uh, CJ Stroud has been cooking. Nico has been one of CJ Stroud's uh, favorite targets. Jerome Ford, he is the number one back there. Denver, though, is a little bit more formidable against the run. There is also the looming factor of uh, Kareem Hunt, who has also been kind of uh, looming some touches. So um, I expect uh, Nico Collins to have maybe a little bit better of a day. I could be 100% prepared to eat my words on that one. We cannot weigh in the defenses as uh, the Jets have played. So the Steers play Cincy. And can also not weigh in kickers as uh, Jake Moody has play, has uh, has already played for Team Dicka. So that leaves Evan McPherson for the Adams family. Uh, and since he taken on hit. All right, if we're going to our second to last matchup, we have a better on paper taking on the reigning and defending champion of the league, Kelsey Misafi. Starting off with our QBs, we have uh, Lamar Jackson, Baltimore taking on the Chargers versus Trevor Lawrence and Jacksonville taking on Houston. Um. Got to go Lamar on this one. Just the Ravens offense, too damn good. And for the kind of opposite reason, Chargers are not good. So the matchup is perfect. Uh, moving into the running backs, we have running back ones. We have Joe Mixon and Cincy taking on Pitt versus Bijan. Uh, Bijan Mustard, just kidding. Uh, Bijan Robinson and Atlanta taking on New Orleans. New Orleans is actually pretty formidable defense. Pitt also a form formidable defense. If, oh man. It's hard to tell. I might go Bijan on this one. If it can be Bijan of the earlier season. Actually, let's see. How is this man played? Oh, he did get 17 points. Well, all right. So, yeah, I totally take Bijan on that one. If we move into the running back twos, we have the Gus Bus and Baltimore taking on the Chargers versus Khalil Herbert and Chicago taking on Minnesota. Going with the Gus Bus. Got to roll with the hot hand. He's been killing it as of late. Also, has a good matchup against the Chargers. We cannot really weigh in on wide receiver one here or two as Brandon Ayuk has already played. So that leaves Gabe Davis and Buffalo take on Philly. And in our wide receiver two, Michael Gapple has already played. So that leaves Tank Dell and Houston taking on Jacksonville. Uh, we can take a look at the tight ends here. And Cole Komet and Chicago take on Minnesota versus Travis Kelsey. And the Chiefs taking on Las Vegas. Got to go with Kelsey. He's just been killing it. He's averaged way more points than Cole Komet has pretty much per game. Uh, he's also the focal, one of the main focal points of that KC team. So give me Kelsey in that one. In our flex spot, we have OBJ in Baltimore taking on the Chargers versus Adam Thielen in Carolina taking on Tennessee. Um, OBJ, I think, hurt himself, and he's also not always he's not always super targeted. So I'm going to go with Thielen, who's been the number one wide receiver there. Great uh, building up at a great rapport there with uh, with Bryce Young, and I expect him to have a decent day against that uh, Tennessee defense. Speaking of defenses, uh, we'll move right on into them with the Niners. Well, we can't really actually talk about them as much as the Niners have already played. Uh, the Chiefs take on Las Vegas. And in our kickers section, Riley Patterson uh, put up a goose egg in 
so that we also can't really, oh yeah, can't really weigh in too much as one's already played. So Tyler Bass also plays uh, Philly um, on Sunday. Let me grab a drink. All right. Now in our last matchup, it is the Team Nugent taking on Pulu Dumpster Water. Let me drop this down. There we go. Okay. So we have Justin Herbert and the Chargers taking on Baltimore versus Kyla Murray and Arizona taking on the Rams. Uh, I like... Uh, Justin Herbert's a damn good QB, but the Baltimore defense is pretty damn good. So Rams, a little bit more middle of the road. Kyler's still working his way back, but I'm going to go and say Kyler on this one. I'm going to limb. Cannot really weigh in on either running backs here as both sets have played. Um, so we can jump in again with wide receiver ones here in Jamar Chase and Cincy taking on Pitt versus Chris Olave and New Orleans taking on Atlanta. Give me Chris Olave to have the better day with that juicy. Uh, but Jamar Chase, though, going up against Pitt could be. Oh, wait, they don't have Joe Burrow anymore. So it's, yeah, give me Chris Olave. Can't really weigh in on wide receiver two here as Tyler Lockett has already played. So we're just going to skip into the tight ends here with Evan Engram and Jacksonville taking on Houston versus Taysom Hill and New Orleans taking on Atlanta. Uh, give me Evan Engram to have the better day. Just ever so slightly. I know Taysom Hill can pretty much be used everywhere, but um, him being that gadget man there in New Orleans. We cannot really weigh in on the flex spot as Jalen Waddle has already played. So take a look at the defenses, uh, which it's Buffalo taking on Philly versus the Vikings taking on Chicago. Um, hard to say, honestly. I might go... Michael with the Vikings just because it's Chicago, but the Bills could, I don't know. I don't trust the Bills defense, but I don't really trust the Vikings defense either. Um, we can't really weigh in on the kickers here as Joey Sly has already played. All right. And that covers all that action from, uh, that, that covers all of my, I guess, predictions for week uh, 12 here, right? I think that's what week we're in. And we 12. Okay. So now let's switch it up. And... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, The next thing I want to show you is the pro, uh, current projected playoffs as of right now. Oh, I forgot to mention that in the standings, as of this week... Let me go back to it. I know I mentioned briefly that Desert Swarm actually clinched the playoffs. I should also mention that... Young Guns and Better on Paper uh, were officially eliminated play from playoff contention. So those are your first kind of sets of results. Okay, so this is the projective playoff bracket as if the season ended right now, this very instant. <clears throat> so we would see our number one seed in the East Division as the Desert Swarm. Once again, they have the best record in the league at 9-2. and two. They would take home that first round by and the one seed then the two seed would belong to the number one in the west division which is d adams family sitting at eight and three they would claim the first round by as well as the two seed then in our first matchup it would see our um third overall top dog team nuge taking on team dicka uh nuge going to that matchup would be going to that matchup at eight and three versus team dicka at six and five so that'd be the three seed taking on the sixth seed then in our other matchup during, I guess, what is, what is this, like quarterfinals? Yeah, quarters, semis. Yeah, so quarterfinals would be CD's Nuts taking on All Hill of Sun God, uh, the five seed taking on the four seed. And that's what if the season ended today. But, uh, all right. Oh, wait, is there, I don't think there's a projected losers bracket. Oh, it just shows one this bracket. Oh, oh, it does. Sweet. Oh, that's because of how we have it set up. We actually have a consolation bracket. Nice. Okay, cool. So then we'll cover the consolation bracket real quick. Perfect. 
So in the quarterfinals, it is projected as of right now, it would be Kelsey Misofli taking on peanut oil. Uh, then it would be Young Gun, or it would be Pool of Dumpster Water and Better on Paper, which would be just a, remate, a rematch of last week. And then in our last matchup, if the season ended, would be Young Guns and Baba's Burgers. This would be our toilet bowl right here, as these are the two worst teams in the league. All right. Now, the last thing we are going to do is go into nfl.com and take our picks for who we think is going to do good in the remaining games this week i know there's actually been a decent amount of football already so thursday and friday have already played so we're going to worry just about what's left on sunday and the monday night game use our good old snipping tool Boom, okay. All right. And ch -ch 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 -ch. Let me switch this. Is it really not going to show? Okay. There we go. Let's do a quick little zoom ski. So everyone can read it. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we got the Falcons taking on the Saints. Who's even quarterbacking the Saints anymore? Is it Jameis? Um, or Jameis? Uh, give me the Falcons in this one. Um, what do we got? Steelers, Bengals. Give me the Steelers. Jags, Texans. Ooh, Jags are seven and three. Give me the Texans. I like Strahd. Um, Buccaneers, Colts. Give me the Colts. Or no, uh, give me the Bucks. Because the Colts just got rid of Shaq Leonard. And let him go to waivers. So you expect that can't be good. Giants versus Pats. Oh, God. Tommy DeVito versus... Uh, whoever the fuck is that QB for the Patriots nowadays is it still Mac Jones do we pick the Giants because they have Saquon and something to go for Titans versus Panthers ah. give me Titans because they're playing at home Rams cards mmm Hmm, probably Rams. Browns, Broncos. Give me... Are they going to let Russ cook? Because Browns have got to run with a uh, backup QB again, I think. And they're playing at mile high. Um, we'll roll the dice and go, let's ride. Raiders, Chiefs, can't go against my homies. Bills, Eagles, definitely Eagles. Chargers, Ravens, definitely Ravens. All right. Oh, Bears, Vikings. Fucking give me Josh Dobbs and the Vikes. All right, those are our picks for the week. Well, for the remaining games this week. All right. 
And with that comes the end of uh, the Fancy House Live portion of the stream. Um, I'm deciding if I want to hop back on. Um, we'll see. But thank you guys uh, that were here for, you know, because I'm going to export this straight up to YouTube. So thanks to uh, everyone that's, you know, watching this video on YouTube. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. You know, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. Um, we are also, uh, feel free to also share out the videos. We're still building up this community. Um, for you, the, for you, the guys that are currently in the Twitch stream, I'm going to end it here for now. Um, I might boot it back up uh, and do some like old school RuneScape for a little bit. Um, it might, I've been kind of digging that for a bit and doing, uh, they did something called Leagues. So it's kind of like a little bit different, but um, anyways, like I said, that's what I'm going to call it for now for just like this stream. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Maybe we will go live for a little bit and see what, see what happens, you know? Um, okay. So once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, and I will catch you guys that are here in the Twitch stream in a little bit. So, all right. Peace out. Stay safe. Much love. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. I hope you guys had an awesome one. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.